Hi, Misha here. I haven't done a black box video in a little while. But part of it is I've been reasonably busy. Another part is I just haven't had much interesting to say. And we've been pretty busy on the uh, on the main channel doing our daily videos. And so I took a few days break. You probably noticed the model videos kind of slowed for a couple of days there. But, you know, I'll get back on it. I actually have some neat new ship models I plan on doing a video on. I found a new line that I've been enjoying. And as the title of this video suggests, I kind of just wanted to talk about the whole situation up north in Canada. But before we get into that, yeah, how are you doing? Uh, we're still under lockdown. Uh, I'm recording this the evening of May the 2nd slash the morning of May the 3rd. And this is the first warm evening we've had. It's in the upper 60s out right now. And today got into the uh, upper 70s, low 80s here. So, you know, but it is May, so kind of kind of seasonal. They're talking about having some businesses open up at limited this coming week, with some starting on May 4th and May 8th and May 10th. And uh, having some restaurants open up with limited capacity. We'll see how it goes. Arkansas is one of the few states that hasn't had a full mandatory lockdown. It's been more... Kind of been more uh, voluntary, which is good. I think that's a good, reasonable way to do it. And our, our rates where we live here are very controlled. And there's only been a handful of deaths. So, you know... Uh, fun thing, uh, tomorrow I'm going to look at some guns <laughs> at, a, at a person's house, you know, with being reasonably safe, but it'll be the first time I've really left the house except to go over to Jay's in two months, and I am per perfectly cool with that. Uh, you know, not driving, I don't really miss it, and it's given me a lot of time for personal videos, and frankly, uh, the only kind of negative thing. I was going to go visit my parents in April, but I had to cancel that trip, so probably have to do it in September now, because hell if I'm going there in the heat of summer, because it gets warm here, but where they live, it's even warmer and even more humid. So, and there's the dog. Cat just walked over to the Canadian situation. Boy, it's the same old thing over and over on both sides. You hear the same rhetoric on the uh, pro-gun control side and the pro-gun side, don't you? So I'll try my best not to not to retread all that, and, you know. And frankly, we're in a political situation. No matter what these days, it seems like people have already formed their opinion. And so they ignore the data that doesn't reinforce their opinion and they promote and t put it on big posters the data that does. I've noticed a few interesting things and this is just modern reporting. The, uh, the, the shooting that happened up in Canada on April the 18th slash 19th, 51 year old denturist I actually, when I first heard that, I read it, I thought it said dentist, and I was very confused, but denturist, yeah. Um, disguised himself as a police officer and pulled people over. I'm pretty sure that's already super illegal. Um, you know, pretending to be a law enforcement officer and then, and then trying to, you know, act like one, that's already really illegal. And then he, uh, he killed people. They haven't released the reason why. Uh, my personal opinion, and he's a fucking nutter um, with no conscience whatsoever. Just a guess there. And it's interesting. They said he doesn't have a firearms license in Canada. Or he didn't, I should say. Meaning every gun he had was illegal. They said he either bought them on the black market up there or across the border to the USA and bought them, which again would be illegal. There's really no way to buy a gun here and take it up there. Yeah, yeah. so he got the guns illegal. That, that's 
that's uh, that's a fact. Now reporting. A lot of news sources are reporting that he killed 22 people on the largest mass shooting in Canada since whatever. But the fact seems to be he shot 13 people. And, the, you know, a number really doesn't matter. But the nine other people he burned, I think. But if you're wanting to be an objective news source, that's what you say. He shot 13, you know, otherwise killed nine. But if you want to make it sound bigger, you say he, biggest mass shooting, 22 dead. Leading people to believe he shot 22 people. And a couple of sites have even said 23 dead. Which is technically true, if you count him. But somehow putting his own death in the body count just to get that extra little number seems a little disingenuous, but maybe that's just me. But that goes to show you how data how numbers can be massaged to prove a point. So in reaction, uh, Justin Trudeau announced on May the 1st, which was yesterday, this big sweeping ban of 1,500 military-grade assault weapons, assault whatevers, assault terriers, I, I don't know. The thing is, this is something his party had wanted for all of this. This is just... This is advantageous to their agenda. There's no really other way to put it. It, it fits into their agenda. The weird thing is... In that list of 1,500 guns, they, they, they did mention AR-15s. AR-15s are already banned in Canada and have been for a long time. So are, quote-unquote, AK-47s and variants. One gun that is now ban, according to this, is the Ruger Mini-14, which many would not really consider an assault weapon, even in America, even in California, the Ruger Mini-14. But that's the kind of assault thing that they're doing. So it would be interesting if you had the time to read through that entire list. I have a feeling that a lot of the guns on there are already prohibited, restricted, or outright illegal in Canada. So it's kind of redundancy, but that's knee-jerk political reaction. It's also worth pointing out that in Canada, for a long time, the rules have been, for rifles, five-round capacity. That's why their SKSs and SVT-40s and, and such have their ten-round magazines pinned to five. Now, with handguns, they allow ten rounds. So, a little bit more for handguns for some reason. The funny thing is that they say that, you know, uh, gun violence and shootings have been on the rise in the last 30 years in Canada. What else has been on the rise is this version of gun control. The thing is, they, they keep trying this style of banning guns, banning features, banning magazine capacities. And not only does the evidence not come back as inconclusive. If anything, it seems to be ineffective to having a negative result. And back when they first started trying the stuff here and there for the first time, I could give them the benefit of the doubt. But when they try for the fifth, sixth round, the same old bands, the same old stuff over and over, well, I mean, what's, what's the definition of um, insanity? trying, doing the same thing over and over again, exactly the same, and expecting a different result. That's what they're doing. This style of gun banning doesn't work. No data points to the fact it does. Them, by the very dint of them saying that shootings have been on the rise, if he shot 13 people, obviously he either had a reload... Or, since he obtained the guns illegally in the first place, there's a very good chance that he had higher capacity magazines that were patently illegal in Canada to begin with. And you see the same thing in, in American states. Here, I, that's... I'm sorry, someone who's going to dress up as a police officer, someone who's going to kill people, you know the old arguments. Again, I'm trying not to restate the obvious. You, you, I have faith in your intelligence. You know the old arguments. On the other hand, I get it. When you have people dead, it's hard to, to not want to do something. And, hey, America and Canada, we have the same 
root of being from the UK and the old UK saying about politics from England, someone should do something. And I think we inherit that from England. It's not a matter of doing the right thing. It's just doing something. And so politicians on either side want to be seen to be doing something, even if it's ineffectual or even contrary to what they really need to be doing. If they're seen to just sit on their butts and analyze, that's negative, even if ultimately it leads to better legislation. The way the political market is now, they need to do something and they need to do something quickly, even if it's the wrong thing. And Canada and America are equally bad about that. And it is a tough situation. I would say this, if you must have gun control, if you must do it, it's obvious you need a whole new tactic. You need to approach this. If they've been approaching it from the left, they need to approach it from the right. If they've been approaching it from the top, they need to approach it from the bottom. The whole mindset is fundamentally flawed. Trying to ban guns, trying to ban features, even trying to ban magazine capacity is wrong. They need to go at it from the other end of things, at the people behind the trigger. I think some could be helped with mental health checks, you know, better support. Others, a lot of times before they do, before they flip out, there are plenty of warning signs, even straight up warnings to authorities that get ignored. Of course, you know, they get warnings all the time, every day, and only one out of however many prove true and in hindsight 2020 you know monday morning quarterbacking you can say well they they were told about him and they were told about a lot of people you don't know which one's gonna flip it's unfortunate but this isn't minority report we don't know the future who's going to commit crimes at the end of the day you really have to have an innocent to proven guilty system you have to protect the rights of 99.99% of citizens. You can't infringe on all their rights just on the 0.001% chance some nutter might do something. And again, this guy, yes, more than half of his victims were through guns, but the other nine were not. So what are they going to do, ban fire? What about his police car? "Quote unquote police car." His car. I mean, should should they ban cars? I mean, the car was without that car, he would not have been able to pull these people over, these motorists over. So, should they ban cars? It, it's just funny. And the thing is, they've said, "Well, look, guns start off legal, and then they finally they find their way into the uh, the illicit, the criminal realm." The same thing could be said for uh, a lot of medication. So, should we ban medication? Because something might end up being used in a crime is not justification in a democratic society to just ban it when most people are using it as intended and legally. And I, th I think these are just fundamental facts. <sighs> but it's the same old thing on both sides. Is It's so trodden. And the funny thing is, I'm recording this here because there's not a whole lot on YouTube about it. It's been done so much. And of course, it's in Canada and with all the other things going on, it's kind of flown under some of the radars. So what are they what are they saying? As far as, as far as the 1,500 guns, you know, assault guns, blah, blah, blah. They're basically saying, oh, you, you can own them right now, but you can't transport them, you can't use them, you can't transfer slash sell them you can't import them so basically you can own them if it's your dark dirty little secret in the closet that never comes out that's useful and they're saying this is a temporary thing that within two years you basically have to surrender them but don't worry they'll give you compensation uh, there's two huge problems with that one how do you value a gun? I mean, what if it has sentimental value? I have some of my guns of mine that are quote-unquote that would fit into the, the category of assault weapon, by their definitions, not mine, that have huge sentimental value. 
How do you value that? I don't want to sell it. So you know right there they're going to underpay. And then the second thing, and this should outrage every citizen, where is that money coming from to pay these guns off? Of course it's coming from tax money, from government money. So every citizen is having dollars taken out of their pocket to buy back these guns that the government's just going to then destroy. And then there'll be another round, there'll be another shooting or massacre five years later. And then what's next? They're going to ban both actions? Funnily enough, not ha-ha funny, but sad and ironic funny, a lot of the gun crimes in Canada are committed with bolt actions. So that, that's what comes next. It's, it's patently absurd to keep trying the same stuff that doesn't work. So, yeah, it's also... I'm sorry, we're, we're adults here. You, you know, children want to believe they live in a whole perfectly safe world where bad things don't happen. That's fine, I guess, for kids, but we have to face the fact that we're adults, and the world is a rough place, and people will die. We all will die. It's just a matter of how and when. People will find a way, if they're mentally out of it, to hurt other people. If not with guns, you know the whole adage. It could be knives, swords, axes, chainsaws, automobiles. Heck, even light aircraft have been used. <sighs> and again, criminals be criminals, and it doesn't matter what you ban. They're just they're they're gonna do it. They're 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 unbalanced. They're not good people. They're not nice people. And we've had not nice people since the dawn of time. You cannot legislate. You can't nerf the whole world. You cannot make the world perfectly safe. And that's just just the cold hard fact that any mature adult has to face the fact on. This is not a fantasy. This is not a video game. Yeah. That's one thing, too. This person who did it, they can't even really, you know, target blame video games or the youth or whatever now because he was 51 years old. So they, they've kind of lost that talking point. I'm sure if he'd been 21, they would try to blame some of that stuff. But he was, uh, you know, solidly middle-aged and did it. I, I, mean, I don't know what would possess a person to do that and I don't know that most of us with a mind can do that it's a certain level of detachment and derangement and anger and hatred that what do you do it's pathetic, it's sick, it's sad and I really do feel for those people who died needlessly it was just random and stupid but myself, other gun owners we're not the enemy. We're not We're not the ones doing this. He wasn't one of us. He did not legally own guns. We hate people like that as much as you do. Because, yeah, every time someone like that does something, it makes us all look bad. I'm, I'm sorry. After 9-11, when crazy Muslim radicals, you know, did the attacks, were there outrages against Islam with their with their calls and governments to ban Islam? Of course not. But it made all, you know, normal Muslims look bad. The same thing is here. Anytime a person in a group does something illegal or bad, that whole group is tarnished. Be they be it along ethnic lines or um, sexual preference lines, what have you. Heck, even gender lines sometimes. But you have to understand, a group isn't responsible for every member, and individuals have free will. They have their own agency. And I get it for people who grew up in cities. They probably don't see the point of guns. They, they kind of have this notion that guns are only good for hunting, and they really probably don't even like that either. They probably see it as kind of a FUD thing, but oh well. The thing is, they need to meet us. We're normal humans. In fact, most of us have extremely clean records or that we wouldn't have guns. You know, in pretty much every country, I mean, I'm assuming pretty much every country in the world, to own guns, you have to have a very clean record. 
it's no different here, it's no different in Canada. So those of us who legally own guns are pretty much on the straight and narrow, because we have to be, and because that's usually our personality. But that's just my thoughts. What, what do you think? And again, I don't want to get into the same old things over and over, but I find this situation just, you know, something that needed to be brought up. It is sickening on many levels. With that said, I'm going to let you go. Uh, feel free to comment below, but if we could, just keep it civil and, you know, feel free to have your own opinion. Feel free to disagree. Just, you know, just keep it civil. Again, mature adult type stuff. I do appreciate you tuning in, and again, stay tuned. I'm going to be putting up some fresh model videos coming up in the next weeks. I've got some new stuff and, and whatnot, so we'll see how that goes. And we're still working hard over at Michiko on the main channel, doing what we can. So, hope everyone is staying safe and uh, hasn't gone too stir-crazy in the house. And if nothing else, at least uh, spring's here and summer is not far off, so that could be good, right? If you could, like, share, and subscribe, all that good stuff. Otherwise, this is Misha, and I'll catch you very soon next time.